There are many types of successful students, but I think they all have something very much in common. Mm -hmm. They want to succeed, number one. Uh, number two, they ask for help when they need it. Number three, they put in the time that's required. And for some people, that's more time than other people. We have our own natural talents, and we're talented in different areas. So for one class, you might find it really hard and have to work a lot of hours. And for another class, you, you might, it just might click and you say, oh yeah, I got this. I don't have to work so hard. But the really good student recognizes that and puts in whatever time is required. All of our students in their high schools are in the top 10. But when they come here, everybody else is in the top 10 too and expectations are elevated, so if people gauge this in their levels of effort, it'll really help them shoot higher than they would otherwise. A successful student is someone who cares about being successful, so knows what they have to do to ensure they're successful in a class and in, through their college career. So if you need help, you go and actually ask for it. Um, you care enough to turn in assignments on time, to pay attention to when you have assignments, when you have tests, and to work with others because you know it's going to be beneficial for you. When it gets to be later in your college career, you care enough to seek out job opportunities or grad school opportunities to make sure that you've made connection with professors to get good letters of recommendation. Engagement is, is a big thing for me. Whether you're trying to get, get a C in a class or you're trying to make your A into an A+, the more engaged a student is, the better the professor will enjoy having that student in class. It really doesn't matter at what level you're performing, but try to do your best, be engaged, and let the professors know that you're engaged. Go to the office hours, ask questions, be active, you'll do great. What pre impresses me is, is when students come and ask for help. Ask for help and to work with other students. You're going to learn more from other students than you will from a professor in a class. And if you make study groups and learn to work together, that's your best advice. Uh, just Sometimes just talking to someone, uh, whether it be a peer or a professor or a staff member or a counselor, uh, will really help. I have students that come in after they have a big problem and they have no idea how to solve it. If they had come in earlier, we could have solved it really easily and they wouldn't be in the situation that they're in. in. In a challenging field like computer science and engineering, your academic year is like a marathon. So don't look at it like, oh, I have an exam, I don't have to work hard. Pace yourself and study at a consistent pace. Consistent and good high level of pace. That way you don't have to uh, freak out when there's an exam coming out or, or when there's a project. So when people tell you about time management, that's probably what they're talking about. So even if there's nothing to do, it's a great thing to study uh, and learn things as they are taught to you. There are different learning styles in classes. The college is more just a you come to class and learn some material on that, but we expect you to do so much more outside of it compared to high school. No one's a super person. Uh, you know, some of us are better at it than others, but you do have to balance things. And you do have to give yourself a break when you don't get that perfect score on, a, on an exam that you were shooting for. If you talk to 10 different professors, you're gonna probably hear like 100 different pieces of advice and this may all sound overwhelming to you, look at it like you're talking to multiple physicians or multiple experts in a game. In the end, you're gonna be your own game expert, you're gonna play the game in your own way. Take your advice and meld, meld it, mold it into your own style. You're not gonna learn everything that you need to learn in four years. It's just impossible and things change. New things come up so that you uh, need to learn new things. So the ability for lifelong learning, you know, it, it's a, a buzzword, but it's really important that you realize that you're not gonna know everything when you get out of here, and that's okay.
So there's a big thing between short-term learning and long-term learning. And all of us, I think, have experienced the, you thought you understood it in class, that was great, you don't look at that material again until two weeks later or four weeks later when it's the test, and then you're like, I don't remember any of that, right? Or you try to memorize something, so you've looked at it one day, and then even just three days later, you don't remember any of it. It falls out of your head, literally. Um, the idea is that when you have a class and you've learned a new material, is to go over it within 24 hours. So that's the critical time period that if you don't get it reinforced in that, it's going to fall out of your head. Um, so make a set time if you have calculus on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that Monday evening you're going to go over that calculus material before you go back to class on calculus on Wednesday and learn m new material that's going to replace that. Your brain can't process and store all of this new information if it isn't reinforced. And if you make it a habit to go and do that in every class that you have a set time, you're going to review that material. You'll find that it takes you less overall time to review and learn material for the test, um, but that you have a better track of keeping up with it. It's so important when you get out in the workforce that, that you really pay attention to detail and you listen to other people because sometimes they'll say something that just clicks in your head and, and makes whatever you're doing, the, the product, the end product, so much better. In the field, um, it is important that you are competent. That means you know your stuff and you know how to apply it. It's easier said than done. And if you rewind this back like six years in your first year, it's really hard to correlate your math classes, physics classes, into what you're learning in the field. So think about what you will be doing in four or five years from now and look at it like a delayed gratification.